Hey there, and welcome to Inside Butler Football. I'm your host, JoJo Gentry. The Butler football team is the only undefeated team in the PFL after winning against Drake 24-14. In a few moments, we'll be joined by Butler football coaches Jerome Rice and Patrick Doherty to talk about last week's game and to take a look at the games ahead. Stay with us on Inside Butler Football. So, Coach Doherty, starting with you, uh, senior quarterback Wade Markley stepped in and performed very well for the injured Matt Lancaster. Uh, Markley passed for a career high of 253 yards and one touchdown and rushed one other touchdown to score. So talk about his ability to step in and lead the team. Well, Wade's done that before. Uh, he did that two years ago, so we were comfortable with that. He was comfortable in his preparation, and the staff felt good with him coming in for Lance. It wasn't like it was... Uh, Oh, let's hope he can have a good game. We felt very comfortable, and so did Wade. So it, it wasn't uh, a big issue. And Coach Rice, talking with you about a little bit of defense, uh, the defense played really well, holding Drake to only one offensive touchdown. And the Spikes also completed four of 13 third down conversions. How was the defense able to keep Drake's offense in check? Well, anytime that you can dominate the line of scrimmage, playing multiple people uh, and affect the run, you put them in a position where they have to pass, and we were able to create turnovers and do some things, uh, force them out of the run, which and then get sacks and hits on the quarterback. So that's what limited the rushing yardage and allowed us to get off the field on third down. And the Butler defense held the Drake offense to only 34 rushing yards as well, mainly in part due to the work of the defensive line. So, Coach Rice, how was the defense – defensive line able to hold the offense to these low rushing totals? I think a lot of work was put into the offseason and we were a year older than we were uh, last year and we have uh, four guys playing now that didn't play in last year's football game. I think that the uh, the number of uh, defensive linemen who play played in the part of that and then I think the preparation this week um, helped prepare them so that we could Knew, we knew what we were going to see, and we knew what needed to do to stop what we were going to see. And the execution, I thought, was uh, excellent. And that's what allowed us to be very successful this past weekend. All right. Well, guys, let's take a look at a few highlights. So, Coach Doherty, the first highlight is a touchdown pass by former quarterback Tom Judge to tight end Dylan Johnson on a reverse pass to put the dogs up 14-7 to heading into halftime. Could you explain this play and why it worked? Well, it worked because Drake took the bait. That, that was the biggest thing. Uh, pitched it out to, to Tom, trying to sell it like it was a reverse. Um, he made a heads-up play, was able to get the ball off. Uh, you know, being a former quarterback, the, the throw shouldn't be too hard. Obviously, he had to get up on his toes a little bit, so that, that made it a little bit harder. And Dylan Johnson was wide open and caught an easy pass for the touchdown. Okay, well, Coach Rice, we'll talk about the second highlight. And this highlight is an interception by Ryan Kelsey, number 13, and at the end of the second quarter. Could you talk about how this play changed the entire scope of the game? Well, right before that, we've given up a, a long pass uh, down their sideline to put them in at least field goal position. And I believe at that point in the game, it was a, um, I think it was a 14 to seven or a 10 to seven ball game. And uh, if they get a field goal or a touchdown, it's either tied or lead. Uh, they go in the half either tied or, or, or leading. Um, he, they, they try to smash her out to the field. We got a little bit of pressure on the quarterback, and he threw it. And what Kelsey did a great job of sinking underneath the flag route and getting, catching the pass and getting a foot in bounds uh, as his momentum took him out. Uh, he also did a great job of selling the interception to the, to the official, and it changed the whole tide of the, to, of the game for us because – we still went into the halftime with the lead. And that was crucial for momentum uh, coming out in the second half because they started off the second half with the football. And the third highlight is a fumble recovery by Paul Yanow. So, um, Coach Rice, could you talk about what they were exactly trying to do here? Well, very rarely do you see a throwback lateral pass to an offensive lineman. Uh, but what they wanted to do was sell uh, the sprint out pass to the field and get the defense to over pursue. And uh, what, with the defense over pursuing, they needed the, the leak out guy on the backside to be an offensive lineman so no one would get um, 
you know, could see the trick play coming. Uh, what happened, uh, the quarterback, as he rolled out, tried to throw a jump pass back uh, towards our bench, and he didn't get enough on it, and the ball bounced. The offensive lineman, because of the lateral, they have to recover. It's not an incomplete pass. The offensive lineman had trouble uh, catching it off of the bounce. He fumbled it forward, and uh, then Paul Yanow, a heads up, jumped over him and landed on the football, and it was a, a big-time play for us in the, at this point in the game because um, at this point – it's a 17 to 14 ball game, and they're driving on our side of the 50. So it was a huge play for us, huge play for the game. And Coach Joy, the last highlight is for you. So this is a touchdown run by quarterback Wade Markley to seal the victory for the Dogs, arguably one of the biggest touchdowns of the season. So explain how Wade was able to find the end zone. Well, uh, on this play, it's, it's a read play by the quarterback. He's reading the defensive end. Uh, should the defensive end crash down like he does, Wade's going to keep the football, and he basically walks in the end zone. Uh, he's able to fall forward. Uh, you know, there's a defender on him, but at that point he's in the end zone. Uh, so Wade, Wade did his job and, and walked in and got a big touchdown. It was, it was great for us to drive down there. It was a big drive for us. We were able to take a lot of time off the clock, and, and it was good for Wade to, to finish the drive with a touchdown. Well, Coach Doherty, Coach Rice, thank you so much for your input for the highlights. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll take a look at the promotional video for the campaign for Hinkle Fieldhouse. Hinkle is a place of service. This is a special place. The first time I walked into Hinkle Fieldhouse, my jaw dropped like an egg from a tall chicken. It was my Hoosiers moment. One of the highlights of my career was not my first paycheck. It was actually getting a key to the gym for an Indiana kid to grow up 20 minutes away and then to have a key to Hinkle Fieldhouse was something that you only dream of. In 1928, with the great vision that they did have in building Hinkle Fieldhouse, it was built with the idea of Butler only having four sports. We have 19 today, and so we're going to make the experience better for student athletes that mostly will occur behind the scenes in the way of a new sports medicine center, a new academic support center, a new weight room, locker rooms and offices that are necessary for each of the teams. For the fan experience, they'll see the same building and the same heart will still be in Hinkle, but they will have more comfortable seating, it'll be more accessible to our entire fan base, there'll be greater traffic flow, the restrooms will be modernized, those kinds of things that make the fan experience better. That's all going to happen with this project, it's an exciting opportunity for us. The thing that we're trying to do in preserving the field house first and foremost is make it so that it lasts forever. One of the things that we want with our players is they to understand that this is not a four-year decision, this is a 50-year decision. And we want Hinkle to not only be something that is a trendy thing right now, but the tradition, the history, what this place embodies. Each year, it gets more special. And that's why it's so important to preserve it. The Academic Success Center is a real key for us to really live by what we believe in and continue to provide uh, educational opportunities for our student athletes. This center will be a support area for our student athletes where we don't have one now. I'm excited because it's going to be a place where our student athletes can go day and night, um, that it'll be open to them. It's going to be a huge shot in our arm with regards to how much more successful I really believe our student athletes can be. History Heart Hinkle is of course our slogan for the campaign for Hinkle Fieldhouse. We all want to see this place preserved and enhanced so that we can tell our grandkids our favorite stories about Hinkle. This is the place where Parents send their children, and our role is to send them back out into the community as educated young men and women. And that's what I envision Hinkle Fieldhouse being all about. It is a special place for lots of different reasons, 
but it's created opportunity for so many people to experience it with family, to benefit as a student athlete, uh, to hear presidents speak and to house our military during World War II. So many things, it's impossible to name them all. But the spirit of all those people and all those activities is in Hinkle, and we want to preserve it. This is a place that's had high achievers on and off the court, and I think is a place that's represented what college sports is all about. There are some special memories that have come out of Hinkle Fieldhouse already, but come and be a part of the ones that are still yet to be made. To be able to give to that and to be able to enhance experience, bottom line is, you know there's something different, you know there's something unique, and hopefully they can give a small portion to help us move forward to this goal. So Coach Rice, San Diego has a very strong offense. They're ranked first in the PFL for scoring offense and ranked second in the PFL for total offense and passing offense. Mm -hmm. Knowing this, how will Butler's defense practice differently this week? Well, we're definitely going to work on tempo. Um, they have a senior quarterback who, who is a four-year starter, and um, he's very familiar with the offense that he's running and that's what allows them to get in and out of formations and plays and shifts uh, that creates problems not only in coverage but in front in defending them. Um, so we have to work on tempo, we have to work on recognition in terms of formation and um, assignments. Biggest thing is assignments because assignments allow big plays. Uh, our practice will allow uh, some guys to get work at positions that maybe um, haven't had a chance to rep uh, that often so far this season and we will look to um, increase uh, I would say the number of reps we get in a, in a practice because they run so many different formations and plays. So it will definitely be a different practice than we've had the previous weeks but the preparation will still be um, you know still be extremely important in terms of preparing us for the trip. So Coach Doherty, San Diego is actually predicted to win the PFL this year according to PFL's website. Mm -hmm. With that in mind, what kinds of energy should this bring to the Bulldogs for practice this week? Well, we've got to have energy no matter who we're playing. It doesn't matter if we're playing the worst team in the rest of the PFL. We've got to come out with the same mentality that we can come and beat any team we play. Uh, Coach Forrest always says it's a nameless, faceless opponent. So the energy shouldn't be different. Um, and we've got to make sure we can come off of a, a big win against Drake, bring the momentum into California, and, and take, care of the, take care of the Toreros. So uh, I don't think we'll be change no matter who we're playing, but uh, we definitely have to be high energy, high intensity, ready for a fight. And this is the first time the Bulldogs will be playing in San Diego since 2010. What are the physical and mental adjustments that need to be made traveling to the West Coast? Well, it, it's a huge adjustment. Um, you know, you're three hours uh, ahead of schedule in terms of going from Indianapolis to San Diego. That's a huge difference. Uh, so getting out there, the, the time clocks will be off a little bit. Um, I think the biggest thing is can, can we get a great week of practice and still stay rested and be ready for a transition in terms of uh, you know, playing a 1 o'clock game in San Diego is really 4 o'clock for us. So uh, we might be a little, a little tired, legs might be tired, but we've got to fight through that and, and play a good game. And the question for the both of you, what do you both look forward to the most when playing San Diego this Saturday? For, I think it's the competition. Um, you know, you work extremely hard in this for 12 guaranteed opportunities to line up and play. And any time that you're facing an opponent that was picked not only ahead of you in the conference, but that you know that you have to play well against and beat in order to accomplish the goals that you set forth as a team, you get a little jacked up about it, you know. So I think that, that for us this week as a team, we're excited about figuring out and having a chance to prove where we're at, where we're going, you know? And if, it, if we played at noon in Kansas City or one o'clock in San Diego or somewhere in Alaska, I think we'd be fired up to play it. That, that's exactly right. You, you've got to come out there and find out what we're made of. Uh, going forward, uh, th this is a, a tough stretch for us. Uh, two row games that are really going to show what we're made of. Uh, if we go out there and play well and take care of business, then They'll give us more momentum as we go forward to this season. Obviously, we got to take care of business with San Diego first, but 
uh, we can find out what we're really made of. We're, we're going uh, a far distance on a plane. Uh, it's a different time zone. So there's a lot of issues that could come up, but if we're a really good football team, we can get through that and show that. Uh, and, and that's going to be the biggest thing for us as, as a staff, and I know all the players are excited to get out there and play. Well, Coach Doherty, Coach Rice, thank you so much for coming to the studio today. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us. That will do it for this week's episode of Inside Butler Football. I'm JoJo Gentry. Thanks for watching, and have a great week, Bulldog fans.